if, uh, if nothing is done, basically, uh, the desertification process is bound to accelerate. And uh, so there is a need for a very bold uh, intervention. The Chinese have tried many intensive measures in an attempt to halt the desert. The largest business in Alashan is the Jilan Thai Salt Lake. It employs 7,000 people and brings much needed cash to Alashan. It's crucial for the economy that the enterprise can continue. Over the years, the company has invested millions of dollars to keep the desert at bay. We've worked on this project for 18 years. We use plants including poplars, willows and specific grasses and bushes to protect our salt lake from the desert. At the present, we have planted about 1,800 hectares of trees. Our region's rainfall is quite low, just 100 millimeters per year. But the evaporation is 3,200 millimeters per year. For the trees to survive, we must use a sprinkler system and underground water supplies to water them. Mr. Yang's team of 90 people are protecting the salt lake successfully. But it's hard to imagine where either the investment or the water would come from to use these active measures in the entire region. Many analysts have begun to question the long-term value of large-scale tree planting on the grasslands as a magic bullet against desertification. They consider that it is very important to understand the exact causes of desertification and to address these rather than to try to fight against the sand. At the end of the day, desertification is not a natural phenomenon. It's not something which is bound to happen. It's something which is, in most cases, policy-induced. So the importance of policy and the importance of people who are effect affected by these policies is critical. Pristine grassland habitats are inspirational. They are finely balanced ecosystems that have evolved over millions of years, with a diversity of animals, birds and plants specially adapted to thrive on the steppe. The harsh climate and fragile soils set a natural limit on the lifestyles of traditional people who live and herd on the grassland. By adapting to a semi-nomadic existence, moving their homes and their herds when necessary, traditional pastoral use of the grassland is sustainable because the grasses are given time to regenerate. The threat is from trying to adapt the grasslands to lifestyles and agricultural systems that were designed for more temperate ecological conditions. <laughs> Recent research and new development methods are helping to create a more effective framework for controlling desertification. The Chinese government, the Global Environment Facility and numerous implementation partners are all focusing on this issue. The uh, government of China, with the support of the Asian Development Bank and the cooperation of all the other uh, GEF implementing agencies, is uh, developing a program approach for sustainable land management in uh, semi-arid and arid areas. The growing desert is a daily reality for the people of Alashan. They're using straw placed in grids to stabilize individual dunes in a move to keep the sand from shifting to other as yet unaffected areas. 
people are encouraged to plant trees and shrubs. But new strategies are needed to conserve the region's natural capital. If destructive grazing is to be phased out, then herders will require education to qualify for more demanding work. This is especially important for the children of the area, who will ultimately determine its future. And Alashan could encourage a new view of its precious water supplies with active conservation measures. More effective irrigation systems that deliver water directly to the roots of a plant greatly reduce evaporation. And higher prices for agricultural water offer a greater incentive to conserve. The straw bale houses at Luanjing Tan are not only helping those who fled the desert to begin again, they are creating much needed employment and showing the world that excellent energy efficient housing can also be cheap to build. You have these big building blocks that are a waste product and they're just so easy to stack up into a shelter and it makes such a good shelter. It's energy efficient, it's warm in the winter, it's cool in the summer and it's just such a direct sustainable approach. The government policy now is to stop herding and plant trees and to stop farming and plant trees here in Alashan. The hope is that in 10 years there could be a basic turnaround in the situation. We are really uh, witnessing a paradigm shift when you focus on policy levers rather than on the infrastructure and uh, large reforestation programs, it's very likely that you will get the result. Protecting the environment for the people here at the edge is about all that we can do. But on a bigger scale, to turn back the desert, we will need the help of the whole world for that. Although far from most people's experience, Alashan is important to humanity. It is in such remote and endangered ecosystems that we must address environmental degradation. For if we fail to protect these wild places now, then we will surely see the signs of collapse much closer to home, making Alashan a very important line in the sand.